Hello there everybody, this is Lane, and today I'll be making a special video comparing some of Namco's most popular arcade cabinets with their Japanese counterparts. Um, if you couldn't tell from the videos or community posts I make, you'll probably know that I am a huge Namco fan. Well, ever since I started looking at Namco's history, I've noticed that most of Namco's arcade games here in the US look different in Japan. Uh, the more I discover the pictures of the Japanese cabinets online, the more I realize that the Japanese cabinets you know, that Namco produced are almost way better than the ones we have in the US. There are many reasons why, mostly because back in the early 80s, Americans tended to prefer video games that looked realistic and epic, something buff or badass. Uh, same trend goes for home console games. But what I'm going to be doing is showing off some of my favorite Namco games and comparing their Japanese releases to their more popular, more iconic US releases. Also, I just want to warn everybody that finding good images of these Japanese upright cabinets are very hard to find. But I have found some pictures and replica versions of these Japanese cabinets, as well as some of the parts from those cabinets such as marquee, bezel, etc. So I'm going to be going over these games from worst to best, more specifically the worst looking Japanese cabinets to the more improved Japanese cabinets. How about let's start off with the, okay it's not the worst in a negative way, but just in an okay way. We have Super Pac-Man, released by Namco in 1982, published by Bally Midway in North America. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any pictures with the side art, but I did at least find the cocktail versions as control panel. The only things I found in the Japanese Super Pac-Man are the marquee and bezel. Let's start off with the marquee. It looks so much better than the US version, mainly because the characters and logo look better. Inky's design in the US cabinet mirrors the one from the US Pac-Man machine, while Pac-Man's design, while a huge step up from the original US Pac-Man cabinet, doesn't look as good as his Japanese counterpart. Not only does the Japanese marquee get the games' logo correct, but I also like the inclusion of Pinky and Clyde. As for the bezel, it's actually the same as the Japanese Pac-Man bezel, except the controls are changed to add the super speed button from the game. I honestly imagine that the stand-up Super Pac machines were retrofitted Pac-Mans that just swapped out the marquee and reused the bezel. And while I currently can't find any images of the side art, I kinda imagine that it was probably just the Japanese Pac-Man side art with the word Super on it. I love the Japanese Pac-Man artwork, so I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But I feel like the US cabinet just had a better color choice, and, e and even the artwork tried to be a bit more original. So overall, the Japanese Super Pac-Man could have used more creativity, at least assuming that the cabinets were just retrofitted Pac-Mans. Next up we have Mappy, released by Namco in 1983, published by Bally Midway in North America. Mappy is one of my favorite Namco games, and it's also probably one of my all-time favorite arcade games in general. It's not that the Japanese Mappy looks bad or anything, it's just missing some stuff. All the pictures of this cabinet that I could find don't have the side art, so I'm not sure if it ever came with side art or what it looks like. Though I'm gonna admit, I actually prefer the way the Japanese cabinet looks. One thing I like about Namco's cabinets from the early 80s is that they all looked consistent. They have the same white cabinet shape, and they're obvious to tell that they're quality games made by Namco. In fact, I think they chose the cabinets to be white so they could brighten up those dirty, dim-litted arcades. And also make the games look more appealing to all ages. I never really liked the way the US cabinet looked, uh, compared to Midway's other Namco releases. As much as I like the artwork on the marquee, it's way too big and looks pretty ugly. Give me the Japanese marquee any day. So in terms of like the way the cabinet is constructed, the Japanese one wins, but I do prefer most of the artwork on the US cabinet. I know we don't have any good pictures of the Japanese bezel, but nothing about it screams mappy to me. I'm not even so sure what the bezel is supposed to be. At least the US bezel has the characters. The control panel on the US cabinet looks decent, but it kind of triggers me that Mappy's blue color scheme is reversed. Also, not every cabinet has this detail, but I also really like the coin door area that has artwork of Mappy and Goro on it. I wish the Japanese cabinets had that detail. So the Japanese machine, while still pretty good, is pretty mediocre and could have used more artwork of the characters. Also, I couldn't find the Japanese side art online. So... Yeah, there's that. Next, we have Galaxian, released by Namco in 1979, published by Midway Manufacturing in North America. Now we are going into the more improved looking cabinets. Uh, Galaxian's actually a pretty fun game. This game used to be so popular that it even rivaled Taito's Space Invaders in terms of success. And to be honest, Space Invaders is garbage compared to Galaxian. 
I'm just saying. Speak for yourself, mother f The presentation on the Japanese cabinet looks miles better. It has much more appealing artwork, appealing marquee, and the bezel doesn't look boring like the US one does. Okay, Glaxine's bezel still looks boring, but at least it looks leagues better than the US one. I don't really have anything else to say about this comparison. It's friggin' Galaxian. Rally-X is next, released in 1980 by Namco, published by Midway Manufacturing in North America. It's an okay game in my opinion. I much prefer New Rally-X, that one I really like. Also, I just want to give a shout out to Twitter user AtariTubin for some of the pictures and clips shown throughout this video. As for the cabinets themselves, they're pretty much identical, but if you look closely, the bezels are pretty different. The Japanese bezel and control panel look so nice, featuring well-drawn artwork of the characters from the game. What does the US version look like? This. What were they thinking? What was wrong with the Japanese bezel? Not only does this bezel have little to nothing to do with the Rally X game, but it also is probably the most boring looking bezel I've ever seen. If I showed you this bezel, without mentioning what game it's from, I doubt you would know it's from Rally X. So yeah, I don't want to play with this bezel. I want to play with this bezel. Next we have another favorite arcade game of mine, Dig Dug, released by Namco in 1982, published by Atari in North America. This is such a great game. You go underground and pump your enemies to death. Though unfortunately, as great as Dig Dug is, it's also one of the reasons why drawings like this exist on the internet. Finding images of the Japanese upright cabinet is extremely difficult, but luckily footage of the machine was shown in a random music video, as well as a model of the machine is shown in Namco Museum Volume 3. Let's compare the bezel to both versions. The US bezel looks great, but I must say, the Japanese one looks better. Not only does the Japanese bezel have more character artwork, but it also has an underground feel to it, which fits the game much better in my opinion. The one thing that the US bezel has are the character names. We got Puka, Figar, and since Taizo Hori didn't have an official name yet, Atari decided to call him Diglas D. Douglas. Now I'd like to call the stand Diglas D. Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot read that without laughing. Your Honor, I'd like to call to the stand Diglas D. Douglas. Your Honor, I'd like to call to the stand Diglas D. Douglas, also known as Dig Dug. Uh, also known as Diamond G, Rock Solid Diggity, Puka Paluka, uh, number one worldwide party instigator. Though I have to admit, the control panel on the US one sucks. It's pretty much like Rally X all over again. At least the Japanese control panel has a Puka on it. As for the marquee and side art, please note that I couldn't find any high quality photos of the Japanese versions. But the marquee on both versions are kind of identical in layout, except the Japanese one has that underground vibe that the bezel does. Also not to mention that the Japanese marquee has more accurate colors than the logo. I could only find a low quality picture of the side art, which is from Namco Museum Volume 3. So, um, yeah, um, even though it doesn't fill the whole cabinet like the US one does, I kind of prefer the way this Japanese side art looks, at least going from this very low quality textured image. Though the US side art looks perfectly fine. Also, I never liked the way the US cabinet looked design wise. I much prefer that Japanese Namco design. Next up, we have Bosconian, released by Namco in 1981, published by Midway Manufacturing in North America. Bosconian might be one of my favorite shooting games. It's such an underrated gem, and also pretty hard to find. The US cabinet looks pretty good, but the Japanese one is still top notch. The US one didn't even get the logo right for some reason. Also, the right color scheme in the Japanese cabinet fits the game and artwork better in my opinion. Also, while I don't have the best photo of the Japanese bezel, I much prefer that large Bosconian ship that the Japanese bezel uses. The US bezel has like 4 pixelated Bosconian ships, which looks okay, just not as good. Overall, the Japanese Bosconian looks better in my opinion. Up next we have Tank Battalion, released by Namco in 1980, published by Game Plan in North America. This game I'm not too familiar with. The only reason why I even remember this game is because of that one US flyer that featured some lady in her underwear. I'm not making this up, that was a real legit flyer that Game Plan made. First off, the Japanese machine has a much better color scheme that fits the game really well. Also, the artwork looks nicer on the Japanese version. The US one's all realistic and comic book-ish. Also, Game Plan never even bothered make the game's side art. But not Namco. 
They did Tank Battalion justice and made their own side art. Overall, the Japanese Tank Battalion looks so much better artwork wise, and not only that, but the Namco cabinet design is way better than Game Plans. Though Game Plans' cabinet design is actually not as ugly compared to, like, say, the US Mappy and Dig Dug. Next up, we have another favorite shooter of mine. It is Galaga, released by Namco in 1981, published by Midway Manufacturing in North America. Tons of people have played it. You probably have played it. I played it. It's very popular. It's such a classic. It's definitely one of Namco's best games. Uh, the Galaga cabinets we have in the US are fantastic. They didn't change the artwork from the Japanese cabinets, which is nice. In some ways, they've kind of improved on the Japanese cabinets in terms of like the color scheme and probably maybe even the control panel. But I still prefer the way the Japanese artwork looks. Uh, the side art on both cabinets are fine. I do kind of prefer the rounded, more simple side art on the Japanese cabinet, but the US one is completely fine. Uh, the US cabinet's bezel is okay. It, has to, it actually has some original art that Midway created. It kind of looks decent, but man, that Japanese bezel looks so much cooler. Those green zigzags that are used inside. And it also has that very natural looking space background. It kind of blends in better with the actual game. Unlike the Japanese bezel, the US bezel just doesn't have that space feel. Like, it's fine, it just doesn't have that same charm. Also, while the marquee looks fine on the US machine, the Japanese marquee is such a masterpiece. I really wish someone could vectorize the artwork on these Japanese cabinets so they can be preserved in the highest quality possible. The only problem is, is that Namco's upright cabinets are just so hard to get a hold of. At least recreating the artwork would be better than nothing. And last up, saving the best one for last, Pac-Man, or as it was initially called in Japan, Puck-Man. Released by Namco in 1980, published by Midway Manufacturing in North America. I'm such a huge Pac-Man fan, and while I prefer other Pac-Man games over the original, I still think the original Pac-Man has the best looking arcade cabinet out of every game in existence. More specifically, the Japanese Pac-Man machine. Midway really pulled a Mega Man on us in their Pac-Man cabinet. The original Pac-Man drawings made for the Japanese release were drawn by Tadashi Yamashita. All he had to reference when making the characters were the game's sprites. He took some creative liberties to make a convincing drawing of the character designs. What we ultimately got was a yellow ball with limbs and a face. Even though it was different from the endgame designs, it still retained that simple charm that the original Pac-Man sprite had. Such as the inclusion of pie eyes, which not only gave it a classic Mickey Mouse feel, but also referenced the characters as in-game sprites as well. Fun fact, Pac-Man's creator, Toru Iwatani, wasn't a fan of this Pac-Man design at first, but since the developers and artists didn't have any time to make any alternative designs, Yamashita's drawings were used for the game's final release. Iwatani eventually grew to like Yamashita's designs, the more it was finalized and the more it was used on other forms of media. Unfortunately, the folks over at Midway dishonored Yamashita's designs because they thought it wasn't good enough for the American market, so they hired someone else to draw the game's cabinet instead of reusing Yamashita's drawings. What we got instead is a confusing mess that barely resembles the game. Pac-Man and the Ghost had such excellent designs on the Japanese cabinet, and while different, still capture that same charm and resemblance to the original game. The Japanese bezel was recreated as a border in early Namco Museum releases of Pac-Man, and Namco Museum for the Nintendo 64 was my first introduction to the Pac-Man series. He and Ms. Pac-Man had such cute designs that I grew to love since childhood, and the borders was what drew me to the Pac-Man games. When I first saw an image of what the Pac-Man arcade machine looked like, I was very confused and didn't understand what these drawings were supposed to be. Apparently, this red-eyed, yellow, armless blob is supposed to be Pac-Man, and this red-eyed, blue, big mouth blob is supposed to be Inky. What made them think that these designs would be more appealing to us Americans than the original? To make matters worse, the drawings themselves feel less poseable, so the artwork on every part of the US machine feels more or less the same. Not to mention some inconsistencies, such as Pac-Man having blue eyes on the control panel, or Inky having yellow eyes outside of the side art. The original artwork was much more poseable, and most of them were uniquely drawn. Also, the characters just show more personality in these drawings, such as Inky's a scared look on the bezel, Blinky's as angry determination on the marquee, or even Pac-Man himself. The US artwork of the characters just have almost the same expressions. Inky always has that stupid, huge open mouth, and Pac-Man always has that stupid 
poop-eating grin. The US artwork have absolutely no imagination whatsoever. They have their charm, but to me, they're such a massive downgrade from Yamashita's drawings. Especially since there have been many artist renditions of Pac-Man in the United States, and most of them look much more faithful to Yamashita's designs than this US cabinet ever did. No disrespect to Gordon Morrison, the person who allegedly drew the US cabinet's artwork, since he is a very talented artist, but his renditions of Pac-Man and Inky are so ugly. I'm just surprised that Bandai Namco still uses these same ugly US designs on their modern merchandise, even in Pac-Man Museum Plus. When I first saw the trailer for Pac-Man Museum Plus, I did expect the US designs to represent the original Pac-Man, but what I was not expecting was the Japanese version of Pac-Man Museum Plus to also have the US designs. Why couldn't they use Yamashita's designs for the Japanese release of Pac-Man Museum Plus? Wouldn't Japanese players be confused as to why the Pac-Man machine in the hub looks nothing like the one they have? Character designs aside, the marquee looks a million times better on the Japanese cabinet. My dad thinks it's a little too busy, but I respectfully disagree. It's actually kind of like looking at a comic book in a way. Here's what I mean. Pac-Man is being chased by Blinky, just like in the game. Then he finds a power pellet on the ground. He then picks it up and eats it. He now has the energy to eat ghosts, and we finally see him chasing a scared Blinky. This marquee is great. It really reflects one of the main aspects of the original Pac-Man. The US marquee looks fine, but pales in comparison. The US bezel, again, it's alright, but the Japanese bezel looks so much better. I know some people might find the multiple Pac-Man distracting, but for someone who grew up playing Namco Museum 64 with this bezel art, it's actually not that distracting. Especially since if you're going to be playing in the dark, you'll mostly be seeing the screen. Though honestly, playing Pac-Man without the bezel feels pretty lifeless. Sure, Pac-Man with only black borders is perfectly fine, but sometimes it can kind of feel... boring. Not to mention that some of the re-releases have rather atrocious looking borders. All I'm saying is, it doesn't truly feel like you're playing Pac-Man unless you're playing it with the original Japanese border, or something similar. The borders on the Xbox 360 release of Pac-Man is a remake of the original bezel, except they use 2D artwork from Pac-Man World in place of the original, but still fine. This is probably my favorite home console release of Pac-Man. The only real redeeming quality that the US cabinet has is its color scheme. I think the cabinet being yellow fits really well in the context of it being Pac-Man. If only we had a version of Pac-Man that combines the colors of the US cabinet with the Japanese artwork, we probably would have the perfect Pac-Man machine. So far, I really enjoyed comparing these Japanese Namco cabinets to the US ones that we Americans are more familiar with. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know in the comments and maybe I'll do another video similar to this. Hit the like button, subscribe for more videos, Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys later.